Uh, this morning, we'd like to draw your attention to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verses 74 and 75. We are reading here concerning Peter's denying of the Lord. And this is the third test that he was facing. And then began he to curse, that is Peter. He began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Peter tasted the bitterness of defeat. Jesus had earlier in the evening told his disciples that the scriptures said that when the shepherd was smitten, the sheep would be scattered. And so Jesus said, tonight all of you are going to be offended because of me. And Peter responded to the word of the Lord. And he said, Lord, though they or though all may be offended, I will never be offended. And Jesus said, Peter, before the cock crows this night that is before morning comes because that's when the roosters usually crow this night before the cock crows you will have denied me three times and Peter began to say Lord I will never deny you though they slay me I will not deny you And yet we read, and Peter began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. I believe that Peter was totally sincere in his love and devotion for Jesus Christ. I believe that when Peter said, Lord, I will never deny you. Even though they would kill me, I would not deny you. I believe that Peter was speaking out of the sincerity of his heart and out of the devotion that he had for Jesus Christ. I don't doubt Peter's sincerity at all. I don't doubt Peter's love for Jesus at all. I do not believe that Peter's was a failure of love or sincerity. Peter's was just the failure of our own weak flesh. And despite his tremendous love and devotion for the Lord, still he failed. First, there was a young girl that came up to him. And she said to him, you were with Jesus. And he said, you don't know what you're talking about. And then later on, another young girl came up. And she said to the people around, this fellow was with Jesus. And he swore and denied him saying, I don't know the man. And a little while later, the crowd said to him, Surely you must be one of his disciples. Your speech is giving you away. You have a Galilean accent. And it was then that Peter began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And as he was swearing, Outside, the rooster began to crow. 
And suddenly the words of Jesus stabbed like a dagger in his heart. Luke's gospel tells us that at this point Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And we read, and Peter went out and wept bitterly. How bitter is that taste of defeat. Unfortunately, I can identify with Peter in his experience. For I have also tasted of that bitter agony of defeat and failure. I have done things that I have sworn I would never do. I, as Peter, have been guilty, if not by words, certainly by my actions of denying the lordship of Jesus Christ. I have said things that no sooner did the words cross my lips than I was sorry I said them. But once they've crossed your lips, there's no retracting. Oh, you can apologize, you can say you're sorry, you can try to rationalize, but you said it, it was done, and now the hurt is there, and the pain's been inflicted, and you think, why did I say that? Why was I so stupid as to express that thought or that feeling? And... And you just feel so defeated. You think, God, why is it that I say those kind of things? Why is it, Lord, that I do those kind of things that I know must hurt you? And surely they are denying of the faith that I have in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It said, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. How do you think he looked at him? You think Jesus looked at him with sort of, I told you so, kind of a look? Or was it a look of extreme disappointment as, Peter, how could you? I don't think so. I think that the look that Jesus gave to Peter was one of tremendous pity and compassion. Peter, I love you. I know your weakness. Peter, I feel sorry for you. I know the bitterness you're going to experience because of what you've just done. But don't worry, Peter. I still love you. And I think it was a look of love and assurance and, and compassion that Jesus gave to Peter. Because it broke his heart. He went out and he wept bitterly. You know when we've done something wrong, that old business of, well, I told you, why didn't you listen to me in the first place, never does much for us except sort of brings up our defenses. Yeah, well, you've told me a lot of things, and you were wrong when you told me those other things, you know. And <laughs> how did I know you were right this time, you know? And we, we, we build up our defenses against that kind of a look or attitude that people may have. Or even that, oh, how could you do that to me? We... We, we build up our defenses for that, you know. And we begin to rationalize and to justify ourselves. But of that look of pain, the look of love, that look of understanding, I know I've hurt you. I know I've hurt and pained you deeply. How I appreciate your love and your understanding. 
and it breaks your heart. And that look that Jesus gave to Peter broke his heart, and he went out and he wept bitterly. How many times I have wept over my own failures. How many times I've wept over the weakness of my own flesh. How many times I have failed the Lord and I realize that it's just me. No one to blame but myself. I failed him. And I've wept over the weakness of my own flesh and over my own failures. What was the cause of Peter's failure? There are probably many contributing factors. Not the least of them, his own self-confidence. When Jesus said to his disciples, all of you are going to be offended this night because of me. Peter said, though they may be offended, I will never be offended. Lord, I don't know about the rest of these guys around here. I don't trust them completely myself. But I trust me. And I know me. And I know that I will never be offended. And Jesus said, Peter, before the rooster crows in the morning, you will have denied me three times. Lord, I would never deny you. I will die for you. The Bible says, take heed when you think you stand lest you fall. The Bible teaches us not to have any confidence in our flesh. Paul the Apostle said, I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, there dwells no good thing. Earlier in the evening, Before he denied his Lord, Jesus had said to Peter, Peter, your spirit is indeed willing. Nothing wrong with that. But Peter, your flesh is weak. Now Jesus knew that, but Peter didn't. And that's oftentimes our problem. You see, the Lord knows us better than we know ourselves. But it is important that I know myself. So the Lord allows me to experience the bitterness of failure in order that I might know what he knows about me. He knows the weakness of my own flesh. I oftentimes think I am strong. I think, well, I don't need any help in that area. I'm able to handle this situation. And I am many times prone to go in with the ability and the energies of my own flesh to tackle a situation. Saying, well, Lord, you don't need to help me with this thing. I've got this one wired. But the Lord knows that my flesh is weak. And he doesn't want me to have any confidence in my flesh. He wants me to learn to trust in him and to rely upon him completely in all situations for all things. And so it is necessary. And I'm the one that makes it necessary by my own insistence upon my ability and my strength. It makes it necessary for God to reveal my weakness by allowing me to experience that bitter agony of defeat.
The second problem with Peter was he was arguing with the Lord. He found himself contradicting the word of Christ. Jesus said, all of you are going to be offended. Peter said, I'm not. Before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. And he is still arguing with Jesus. Lord, I'll never deny you. Though they kill me, I won't deny you. Sometimes you find yourself arguing with the scriptures. Know this. If ever you get in an argument with the word of God, you are wrong. God's word is true. What God said will stand. Now there are many times they say, well, that doesn't apply to me, you see. Yeah, that hap that's for everybody else, but not me, Lord. <laughs> yeah, that might apply to the rest of them, but it doesn't apply to me. And sometimes we think that we have some kind of an uh, exclusion from a command of the Lord, from a warning of the Scriptures. Well, it's nice, Lord, that you warn all those weak people about that, but, you know, you don't need to warn me because that doesn't apply to me, Lord, you know. And, and somehow... We at times find ourselves arguing with the Word of God. And that's always a dangerous place to be. God has spoken and His Word is true. And there's someone that said the dice of the gods are loaded, which means you can't really go against the Word of God, and win. Inevitably, you're going to find yourself defeated when you try to go against the Word of God, against the Scriptures. You try to somehow go against them, you're going to end up defeated. Peter, arguing with the Word of the Lord, ended up with this bitterness of defeat. Someone said, had Peter not been sleeping instead of praying as he should have been, he would never have denied his Lord. That the failure was the failure of devotion. The night before, Jesus said, Peter, couldn't you watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Had Peter been praying instead of sleeping, he would not have denied his Lord. Someone else has pointed out that Peter was actually standing by the fire that the soldiers had made, for it was cold that evening. And he was warming himself by the fire and that any time you seek to find warmth at the fires of the enemies of Christ you are putting yourself in the position of denying the Lord a dangerous place to be finding warmth at the enemy's fires finding enjoyment delight comfort in the enemy's territory Yet someone else has pointed out that Peter had been seeking to follow the Lord afar off, and that always ends disastrously. We must stick close to Jesus. Just exactly the cause of his failure will probably not be known. It's probably a combination of all of these factors to ascertain exactly what caused his failure isn't as important as to note what he did about his failure. 
trying to delve into your own psyche to find out why you do the things you do may have limited value. But the important thing is, what do you do about it after you've done it? Because you're going to do it. We all of us experience that bitterness of defeat. We all of us have come short of what God would have us to be. We have all of us failed in that test. We have all known what it is to have a weakness in our own character, nature, and that bitterness of, of failing the Lord. But what do I do about it? Now, there are some who tragically try to justify themselves. Even some so foolish as to blame God. Well, God made me this way and I can't help it. If this is the way God made me, this is the way I am, you know. And so uh, it's God's fault. Adam was really blaming God. God said, Adam, what have you done? And Adam says, well, it's that woman you gave me. It's your fault. <laughs> and, and it's sort of tragic when a man tries to blame God for what he is. Because that isn't the road to victory or to help. Peter realizing what he had done, went out and wept bitterly. Bitter tears of repentance. God, I'm sorry. And in those bitter tears, Peter found restoration, the forgiveness, the love, the cleansing. Now, Peter's failure was no surprise to Jesus at all. It was a surprise to Peter. But Jesus knew the whole time he was going to fail. In fact, Jesus told him he was. It was only Peter that disagreed and argued with the statement of Jesus. Jesus wasn't surprised at all when Peter denied him. Peter was shocked. He was surprised. The Lord is not really surprised at our failures. So oftentimes I find myself completely disappointed with me. I think, I know better than that. Why did I do that? And I'm disappointed with myself. I'm actually surprised at myself, at some of the stupid things I do. And I think, how could I do that? That's so stupid. And I'm surprised at my own stupidity. But God knew all the time how stupid I was. And I didn't surprise him. He knew all the while. But even knowing it all the while, he still chose Peter. He still loved Peter. And he didn't forsake Peter. Now, God knowing you, knowing all about you, knowing your failures, knowing where you're going to fail, how you're going to fail, to what degree, he still chose you. And he still loves you. And he will not forsake you. And it doesn't really disappoint God because he knew it all the while. And if you, knew, if you know something all the while, then you're not disappointed. When it happens, you know it's going to happen. 
and God knew all the while Peter was going to fail. And yet God loves him and used him. And God loves you and wants to use you. It would be tragic if God only used perfect people because he'd have no one to use. And so God has chosen to use imperfect people who know that they are imperfect and thus are brought to that place of reliance upon him and trust in him. Must I always fail? Must this be the pattern for the rest of my life? No. Thank God I don't have to fail. After Peter had failed, Jesus said to him, now you wait in Jerusalem because you're going to receive power from on high. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be a witness unto me. Peter, you, you denied me, but you're going to be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. But that power to witness was to come from the Holy Spirit. And so through that enabling power of the Spirit, God gives to us the power to live a victorious life. I don't have to stumble. I don't have to fail. God has given to me the power to be victorious, but I must appropriate that power. Now, we have an organ over here that operates on electronic principles. In order for that organ to work, it's got to be plugged into the power source. There is no foot pedals and air bellows that you can pump and make that organ go. It has to have a power source in order for it to play. Now, the organ may be able to function and the Electrical generators in Huntington Beach may be working and sending the electricity through the lines out here to the transformer being brought into the building and there may be power right in that socket. But until you plug the organ in, it's not going to play. Power is available. The organ has the capacity, but there has to be that appropriation of the power before it'll function. God has made available to us this source of power in the Holy Spirit. There's no lack of God's power made available to us. With that power, we are able to function and be victorious, but there comes that necessity of having to appropriate that power, and I'm not apt to appropriate it until I am first of all aware of my need to appropriate it, and that, unfortunately, I only discover when I discover my own weaknesses through bitter failure. So it seems that failure is a necessary tool or instrument of God in my life to bring me to the place of not trusting or relying upon myself, but trusting and relying in Him completely. 
And God knows that I need to do that. God knows that as long as I'm going along in the confidence of my own flesh and, and feeling like I'm capable and I'm able to do it, God knows that I'll never achieve my full potential. And so in his tender love, he looks down and he says, oh, there he goes again, thinking that he's got something and thinking he's got something. Well, pull the plug on him, you know. <laughs> and then I experience that bitterness of defeat. I say, oh, God, how could I do that? Lord, you know, and, and, and I go through my whole routine. Condemnation and guilt and the whole thing. And the Lord says, now look, you can't do it. I know your frame. I know you're only dust. You need to know that. You need to know that you've got to rely upon me. And God brings me to that place of trusting and relying upon him because as I am relying upon him and the power of his spirit, then I can achieve the full potential that God has for me. God wants to bring me into a higher realm. God wants to bring me into a greater experience. God wants to use me in a greater capacity. He can't many times because I am in the way. And so he has to get me out of the way by showing me that I am weak, that I am fail, that I can only fail in order that he might bring me to that place of complete trust in him so that he can then do through me what he's wanting to do through me and I'm not then standing up and boasting of all that I have done and I don't have this big trip, you know, of I'm so wonderful and I'm so good and I'm so marvelous and I've done so much for God. but recognizing that I am weak, recognizing that I have failed, recognizing that the bitterness of defeat, as God then begins to do his work by his spirit, all I can do is stand back and praise the Lord and encourage others to praise the Lord for the glorious work that he has done and be thankful that God can use imperfect instruments to bring glory to his name. Oftentimes, I wonder, God, why did you allow me to experience such bitterness, the agony of defeat? But it was necessary in order that I might know that sweet joy of victory in the Spirit, that I might come to God's highest intention for my life. Three times, Peter denied the Lord. A few days later, on the Sea of Galilee, as Peter had said to the disciples, I'm going fishing, they said, we'll go with you. And they all got in a boat and went out and started to fish. And having toiled all night and caught nothing, in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but they didn't know it was Jesus. And he said, did you catch anything? And they said, nah. He said, why don't you cast your nets on the other side? They heard that someplace before. And they cast their nets on the other side, and immediately they were full of great fish, so much so they couldn't even draw the net into the boat. And when John saw they couldn't draw in the net because of the multitude of fish, he said to Peter, that's the Lord. <laughs> and Peter put on his coat, for he was naked, and he jumped in and swam to shore and he found Jesus already had a little bed of coals and was uh, grilling some fish. And he said, come and eat. And then he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Oh, Peter said, Lord, they might, you know, but I won't. <laughs> he said, do you love me more than these? You said you did. Now, notice three times Jesus asked Peter, do you love me, giving Peter an opportunity to three times confess his love. 
Three times he had denied his Lord. So now the Lord gives him three times an opportunity to confess his Lord. Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Oh, with what love and tenderness Jesus deals with us when we acknowledge and recognize our failure and we come to him for help. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you today that you deal with us with such patience, such love, such compassion. Father, we thank you for the bitterness, the agony of defeat. For, Lord, through it we learn not to trust in ourselves, but to trust in you. And we thank you, Lord, for the glorious joys of victory through the power of your Spirit working in our lives. Help us, Lord, to learn the lesson well. Help us, Lord, to trust always in you and not to lean upon our own flesh, not to rely upon our own strength, but to trust always in you that we might continually know the victory of thy spirit working through us. In Jesus' name, amen. It's quite possible that some of you this week have tasted that bitter agony of defeat, in fact, you really didn't want to come to church today. You felt so horrible over what you've done. And looking back on it, you still can't understand why you did it, how you could do it. And yet, though you felt like you didn't want to come, somehow you were driven to be here. It was because God loves you. And he knows the bitter feelings that you are going through, that agony of failure. But he still loves you. He chose you. Though we deny him, the scripture says, he will not deny us. He is faithful. And he's just seeking to draw you back and say, now learn, learn not to rely upon yourself. Learn to trust in me. Maybe you'd like to go back to the prayer room before you go home. And there find the full restoration through the power of Jesus Christ. And there experience the power of God's Spirit enabling you to go out this week and live a life that is pleasing and acceptable unto Him. May God be with you. May God bless you. May He strengthen you by His Spirit. And may you know the glorious joy of victory Victory through Jesus Christ, in his name.